to meet you once again friends uh, today we're gonna be discussing about the component method of solving given vectors let's say you are given a question like the one on the board it reads given three vectors a b and c such that a is 8 newtons 65 degrees north of east b 100 newtons 20 degrees south of east and c 60 newtons 180 degrees west of south what is the magnitude and the direction of the three forces so here we are being asked of the magnitude and the direction of the given three forces right the first stage when you are solving a question like this you are supposed to have a representative or you are supposed to have a diagram that is representing the given forces so this is how you go about it let's say you are having a Cartesian plane like this where this is the x and this is the y of which here we are dealing with the cardinal points so we can say this is our north this is our east this is our south and this is our west now we need to represent those angles on the cardinal points well we have the force a that is 80 newtons 65 degrees north of east which means you are at east going to the north so from this point you measure 65 degrees going to the north and this is the angle and this is the force a which is equal to uh, 80 newtons well we also have the force b that is 100 newtons 20 degrees south of east which means you are at east you are going 20 degrees to the south which is this angle like this we have our 20 degrees here and we have the force b which is equal to 100 newtons well we also have the last vector which is um the vector c 60 newtons 180 degrees west of south which means i am at west i am going to uh to south where is my south here it's 180 degrees west of south it's supposed to be 180 degrees uh, west of east not south it's west of east okay which is from east going to west 180 degrees let's just use this line to represent the angle which is 180 degrees just like this well you have uh, managed to represent all your forces so here is the force c which is how many newtons 60 newtons you have managed to represent all the forces on the cartesian plane or on the cardinal points now what you need to do to come up with magnitude magnitude comprises of the x component as well as the y component every force here has got its x component as well as the y component so for us to come up with the magnitude we really need to combine or to find the sum of all the x components of the force a b and c and we do likewise for the forces in y for a b and c so right let's use this method let's uh have our sort of um our table here where this is our vector this is our angle this is our x component and this is our y component fine we have got vector a 
vector B and vector C. Where vector A, we agreed that it's 80 newtons. Vector, uh, vector B, vector B is 100 newtons. And vector C, it's 60 newtons. Right. Now we need to know the angle. What you must know is this is the first quadrant, second quadrant, third quadrant, and the fourth or last quadrant. In the first quadrant, our angle should be in the range of 0 to 90 degrees, which means if you are given another angle that is above 90, it means it's no longer in the first quadrant, it's in the second quadrant. The second quadrant, the angle should be in the range from 0 to 180. Third quadrant, 0 to 270, 0 to 360. So now we are paying attention to the angle in each quadrant. Here we are having an angle of 65 degrees, which is true. So our angle for A is 65 degrees. For the X component, the X component using the vector form will be uh, the force 80 newtons cos 65 degrees. The Y component will be 80 sine 65, like this. Then we go for B. Our angle B is right here. We said in the fourth quadrant there is no angle of size 20 degrees. Why? Because the angle in this quadrant should be in the range of either uh, from 271 to 360. So there is no an angle of size 20 degrees. Instead, what you can do to get the angle that is found in this quadrant is to subtract this 20 degrees from the total angle in the fourth quadrant which is 360 minus 20 degrees so the angle is 360 minus 20 which will give us 340 so the x component will be uh, 100 cos 340 uh, here we will be having 100 sine 340 okay wow then the last one c right the angle for c is 180 degrees which is fine so we can just take this one as it is 180 degrees the x component will be uh, 60 cos 180 the Y component will be 6 sine 180. Um, okay. Now, since we say that the magnitude is made up of the summation of all forces in the x axis as well as the summation of all the forces in the y direction so what are we going to do now is to find the summation of the forces in x axis then the summation of the forces in y axis okay let me take a, uh, a calculator fine so let's find the sum of our forces Right, 8 cos 65 is giving us 33.8 degrees plus 100 cos 340 it's giving 94 newtons then the last one 60 cos 180 is giving us negative 60 so the summation of all the x component forces is giving us 67.8 newtons. So the summation of forces in X is equal to 67.8 newtons. Then we do the same for the summation of forces in Y component. 
8 sine 65, it's 72.5 plus 100 sine 340, which is negative 34.2, 6 sine 180, which is 0. Then the summation of all those forces is 38.3. So summation of forces in Y is equal to 38.3. Right. Let me just uh, maybe give you a, the relationship between the X component as well as the Y component with respect to the magnitude. Right. Let me just do it this way. As we are seeing, this is the positive force. This is also the positive force. We have four quadrants, of which among the four quadrants, where the X and Y are positive is in the first quadrant. So we are having a force like this one. Then we are having the horizontal component as well as the vertical component. Which means, in other words, this is our magnitude, which we are representing by F. Then this is the summation of forces in X. This is the summation of forces in Y. But for you to give the direction, this part, it is represented by this angle, which is formed by the resultant force, which is the sum of the forces in x-axis as well as forces in y-direction. So, now we need to calculate the magnitude or the resultant force using the given information here. As you can see, this is a right angle triangle. So, we are going to use the Pythagoras theorem to find the magnitude. Pythagoras theorem, in this case, our F will be equal to F squared will be equal to summation of forces in X, we square them, plus summation of all forces in Y, then we square them. For us to find the final, we have to introduce the square root both sides, just like this. So, we will have our F being equal to the square root of 67.8 squared plus um, 38.3 squared. Then from my calculator, I am having 77.9, 77.9 newtons. So this means this is the resultant or the magnitude of all these three forces. Now we need to find the direction in which this force is acting. Now as I uh, have indicated before that the direction with respect to the information depicted here is the angle that this force is acting upon. Now, for us to find the direction, as you are seeing, we have the summation of forces in Y and the summation of forces in X. We really need to find the, um, sort of the tangent of this angle. Here is what we are going to do. Uh, I'm going to use this other board because of the space here. Or I can just use here. Let's hope you are going to, to see. So for the direction is represented by theta, which is equal to arc tangent or arc tan of what? Of the summation of forces in Y divided by summation of forces in X, just like this, which is equal to arc tan, summation of forces in Y, 38.3. Divided by summation of forces in X, 67.8. Then you...